Well, let's start with that too, because with energy, this is one of the biggest energy rich places in California. And I think that there's some people that are concerned with how much oil that we produce, uh, that maybe oil is gonna be a thing of the past for people out here. And there's still thousands of jobs that, uh, that are somehow connected to our oil market. Uh, do you perceive being a champion for oil in the Senate for California? The goal is to have energy certainty, to be able to provide the most stable, low-cost energy that we can to allow our businesses to thrive. In the near term, we're certainly going to continue to see a need for oil and gas production, but we're also going to need to make a big investment in creating high-paying American jobs in those other greener energy industries. So it's not an either-or, it's a both, and I think it's going to stay that way for the foreseeable future. The biggest concern always that when we speak to people who have oil jobs is how do, how do you make that transition to a different sort of energy industry. For some of these jobs, we're going to see increased job opportunities for people with skill sets. So if, for instance, if you're working in the, um, as an electrician or you're working on outside utility lines, we're going to see more need for storage and, and transmission. Where we're going to create the energy tomorrow is going to be a little different maybe than where we created it in the past. Um, I think for some of our pipe fitters and other workers, we're going to see that work transition some of it to water storage. So we're making huge investments in infrastructure, and that's going to translate to lots of good high-paying jobs. I think for people who are currently working in the oil and gas industry, they should understand that this is a long-term process, but it's one that we need to begin. You're one of three progressive Democrats that are sort of taking the center stage. What separates you from the other two incumbents in the House right now? Well, I don't do Congress the way everybody else does. I've only been there for five years, um, and in that time, I've really shown a willingness to call out some of the corruption in Washington. I'm the only person in this race who has never taken corporate PAC money. I don't take contributions from federal lobbyists, and I have a track record of showing that I cannot be bought. So whether we're talking about big pharmaceutical companies that are raising prices on prescription drugs, making it hard for us to afford, or we're talking about a government official from either party who's not doing their job, I'm willing to call them out and call them to task. I didn't go to Washington to follow the rules. I went to Washington to rewrite them so they work better for everyday families. And on that note, you're well known for your viral moments that I think maybe engage people who wouldn't typically be engaged in politics. Uh, what are some of your proudest legislative achievements? Well, legislation is one of the tools that we have. Um, we also have tools like oversight. So I'll give you an oversight example and I'll give you a legislative example. Um, on the oversight side, I would say it was going toe to toe with the director of the Centers for Disease Control to make COVID testing free. This was early on in the pandemic and the costs of COVID testing were a real problem. People were worried if they were sick, they didn't know if they could afford to get a test. And I was able to push him to use an existing law to make it easier for families to afford the health care that they needed. In terms of legislation, I would say that the, my law that was incorporated into a larger package that rebates back to taxpayers when pharmaceutical companies hike the price of drugs faster than the cost of inflation. We can't afford this kind of price gouging. As patients, we definitely cannot afford it as taxpayers. Something that's different about your district as opposed to your, uh, the other Democrats in the race is that it's more of a purple district. How do you win a more purple seat? And does that also set you apart, the fact that you're able to win a district that has multiple political views? Absolutely. I'm proud of the fact that I represent about equal numbers of Democrats, Republicans, and independents. What it has me doing is listening to people and focusing on the things that we have in common. I've never met a Californian of any political party or any background who didn't want us to have a strong economy with opportunities for our kids and housing that is more affordable. So there are issues that unite us that we need to work on, but we also need someone who's going to do the work of listening. You can't win in a competitive, tough environment like Orange County from Washington. You have to be there knocking on doors, listening and learning. And that's exactly what I was here in Bakersfield doing. It's the beginning of a, of a more of an opportunity to see and learn about things statewide. Now, potentially more difficult conversation is Senator Feinstein's health at the moment. She's going through, it seems to be some medical complications, but would you, would you be willing to be appointed by, excuse me, by Governor Newsom uh, should she decide to step down? Well, Governor Newsom has said in public um, a couple years ago that if there were an opportunity to appoint California's next senator, that he would appoint a black woman. Um, and I am not a black woman, so I think that Governor Newsom has made his position clear. But let me say this. Really, this should be Californians' decision, especially at this point. We're, we've got a primary coming up in March. The election season is well underway. We're all out here campaigning and talking to voters. This is a big decision for the people of California to help elect a leader who's going to help fight for our state and steer it forward on the challenges going forward. So I very much look forward to competing and to earning the vote of Californians. If it is Representative Lee, would you be concerned that she would have a leg up in the primary should it come to March? 
Um, I just don't know how to think about that because I see Senator Feinstein has continued to um, be in Washington. Um, I think she is traveling back to California for some of the August recess, but I, as far as I know, she plans to return, and I'm fully focused on winning the votes um, in March. Can you talk about a little bit about your background in farm and maybe your pitch to Kern County voters, especially at a big day today, too? Well, one of the things that I'm here to do is to demonstrate through my actions, not just my words, that I value the contributions of Kern County, I value the contributions of the Central Valley, um, and I was able to meet with farmers, tour, um, get to see the work that they're doing, the innovations that they're making, um, and the contributions they make to our economy. Orange County sometimes gets overlooked. We're neither LA or San Diego. Um, I think Bakersfield sometimes gets overlooked. It's the 48th biggest city in the US. And so I think one of the things that folks in Kern County can count on is that I will be present. I will make the trip not once, not twice, but dozens and dozens of times um, in representing California. You really need to understand that there are regional concerns and there are regional differences. We can't just have a senator um, who represents Los Angeles or represents San Francisco. Every part and pocket of California deserves to feel listened to and a lot of people here are still feeling the pinch, whether it's rent, it's at the grocery store, at the gas station. What do you have to say about you know, passing the Inflation Reduction Act, also the infrastructure bill? Do you think those will be great in the long term for Kern County residents, and is that something you're willing to run on? The infrastructure bill is great for Kern County. It's great for California generally, particularly the $8 billion investment in Western water infrastructure. As we know, a lot of California's water infrastructure is decades old, dating back to the 60s and 70s. That's going to create jobs, but it's also going to create opportunity to do more manufacturing um, and to have more water certainty in this area. So I think we're, we're looking at creating jobs through the uh, bipartisan infrastructure law. I think inflation remains a concern for a lot of families. We've seen it slow down, but that doesn't mean prices have gone back. I think we feel it at the pump. I think we feel it at the grocery store. And I think we have to be willing to, to call out that inflation when it's coming from corporate greed rather than coming from higher input costs. All right. Thank you so much, Representative. We appreciate your time and thank you for visiting Kern County. Thank you.